Good evening to all. At the outset, allow me to greet my fellow ORD, Secretary Ralph Recto, and all of tonight's ORDs. I am truly, deeply honored by this award. In three weeks, I will celebrate my 80th birthday. <laughs> and there is, there is no greater signal that the person has reached super senior status than to be given his first lifetime award. I do not know if I should be thrilled that my life is being celebrated, or am I being told that my work is done and I should now spend more time with my grandchildren? Either way, I am truly deeply honored. First, let me thank Richard and Rebecca Mills, the organizers of this Asia CEO Awards, and the Board of Judges, led by Dr. Bernie Villegas. Thank you so much for honoring me with this award. I'd like to just go through a few of the people I really need to thank. Let me first thank my FINMA family, without whom I would not have been able to accomplish much of my work. My longtime colleagues and mentors, Oscar Hilado and Magal Barasin, my senior associates, Chito Salazar and Happy Tan of Education, Billy Del Rosario and Ed Zahagon of Construction Materials, Bobby Lavina and Pete Felix of FINMA Foundation, Mari Del Rosario and Dean Sid of Hospitality, our CFO EJ Kwahian Sen, our Group Controller Ruby Alvarez, Peter Perfecto of Ruby of Public Affairs, and of course, my extremely patient Executive Secretary of over 40 years, Silvia Asperilla. You are too many to mention individually, but you are the crusaders with whom I am pleased to march as we pursue our vision of making lives better. Next, let me quickly thank my natural family. My parents were Milagros and Ramon del Rosario. My mother was, of course, called Millie. And as you would expect of a person named Millie, she was happy, lively, playful, charming, and loving. And she brought warmth, humor, and love to our family. My father, Ramon V. del Rosario, founded FINMA nearly 70 years ago, motivated by a desire to show that Filipino managers are equal to the best in the world and to contribute meaningfully to the building of a strong Philippines. And as I will relate shortly, our work at FINMA has never deviated from an unequivocal commitment to nation building. And of course, I thank my ever supportive siblings, my sister Pinky, my brothers Billy, Miguel, and Mari, all of whom share the passion of continuing the work my father started. Last and certainly not least, I thank the five women who have dominated my life. My four daughters, whom I fondly call my jewels, Nikki, Denise, Danielle, and Mo, and my crown jewel, Marivik, my dearest spouse and partner for 56 years and counting. They, they are my inspiration and my motivation, but also my partners and my friends, my traveling companions, and increasingly my caregivers. They have spurred me to lofty achievements, but also have kept me grounded on the need for human humility amid success. Best of all, these five women have gifted me, this 80-year-old man with a wonderful, loving, united, united family who are my greatest source of joy. My five jewels, three sons-in-law, nine grandchildren, my wonderful, loving, and lovable brood of 18. Thank you all most profusely. At FINMA, we have always adhered to the mission our founders set nearly 70 years ago to be an active participant in nation building. This we pursued for most of our first 50 years by, build, by helping build our country's industrial base, by establishing enterprises ranging from steel roofing to pulp and paper, and to our country's only Filipino-owned oil refining and marketing company. But it was in building and expanding our country's cement industry that FINMA made its largest contribution, at one point owning or managing 50% of total Philippine production and sales. 
when in the aftermath of the devastating Asian financial crisis of 1998, FINMA decided to dispose of its flagship cement business. We faced the ultimate decision of distributing the sales proceeds and terminating our operations or carrying on. We agreed that there was much more to be done and much more we could contribute. But this time we decided we would concentrate on improving the quality of our country's principal resource, our people. And this we would do by making good quality education accessible to those who need it the most, the masses of our people who remain underserved. My colleagues and I had had long stints as trustees in universities through which we observed both the power of education and the need to make it more accessible. But we knew we needed a dynamic, well-motivated academic expert to be our ball carrier. And the first name that came to mind was a young AIM professor who impressed me during my stint as AIM trustee, and his name was Dr. Chito Salazar. Chito liked the challenge and, and our mission, which we have now encapsulated in the phrase, making lives better. We defined our market as the D and E economic sectors, and our students would be the children of farmers, tricycle drivers, house helpers, manual laborers, government employees. 70% are the first in their family to pursue a college degree. They are the products of our public high schools, with only 3% of them qualified for college. They have grade four competencies in reading, writing, and math. To turn these, kid, these kids away would be to condemn them to perpetual poverty. So we take them in and work with them so that at the end of their four or five years with us, they have as good a chance as their counterparts in the best schools to pass board exams that will allow them to be doctors, nurses, teachers, engineers, accountants, and policemen. Fast forward to 2024. 20 years after we started on our education journey. This school year, we have 164,000 students in 11 FINMA schools in the Philippines and Indonesia, making us the largest school system in the Philippines and Southeast Asia. In school year 23-24, our graduates achieved an 84% passing rate across all board exams. And FINMA schools were the best performing school in optometry, second best in pharmacy, third best in nursing, and third in criminology. 77% of our graduates were employed within one year after graduation with 39% earning above the minimum wage. While we are not yet satisfied, these numbers are not bad. Considering only 3% of these kids were ready for college when they came to us with grade four skills in reading, writing, and math. And I am further pleased to note that these results were achieved in the context of a viable business operation that has attracted investments from the likes of the Asian Development Bank and the Netherlands Development Finance Institution, FMO, who both exited recently as planned with a 100% return on their investment after five years. And the renowned private equity firm, KKR, whose recent significant investment brings us a major global partner. Our dream is to spread the benefits of accessible, good quality education to one million kids in the Philippines and Southeast Asia within the next 10 to 12 years. Beyond affordable education, we now aim as well to do what we can in providing affordable housing and sufficient and affordable food to the underserved. Finally, allow me to close by saying that while we at FINMA are proud of our accomplishments, there is so much more that needs to be done and so much more that can be done if we in business link arms, collaborate, 
join forces and work together with a common purpose of making lives better. To give impetus to this idea, we have recently established at the De La Salle Ramon V. Del Rosario College of Business, the FINMA De La Salle University Center for Business and Society, to spread the message that business is more than just profits, that it has a major role in nation building and making lives better, that business can and must be a force for good. I invite you all to join us in this crusade. Together, we can make many more lives better. Thank you again for the great honor of this award. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you.